In this video, I'm going to explain how to draw the stress strain curve for the FRCS Trawl North examination. First of all, you draw the axes. On the y axis, you have the stress, which is measured over force over area squared, and in this case, is measured, over, is measured as newtons over meters squared. On the x axis, you have the strain, which is usually illustrated as a percentage or defined as the change in length of a material over the original length. Now, as you stress a material, it starts, first of all, as a linear uh, curve. Now, this portion of the curve is also known as the elastic region. In this region, at any point when the stress is removed from the material, the material will return back to its original length back here. This portion of the curve also follows Hooke's law of proportionality. The gradient is known as the Young's modulus of elasticity. The steeper the Young's modulus, or the steeper the gradient, or the higher the Young's modulus, the stiffer the material. An example of this is a ceramic. The more shallow the gradient, or the smaller the Young's modulus, um, this, this means that the material is less stiff, such as cartilage or tendon. Beyond this point here, you enter the plastic portion of the curve. In this portion of the curve, if you remove the stress it follows a parallel path back down to its permanently deformed length. And the distance between here and here gives you an idea of the permanent deformation illustrated. This part of the curve is known as the yield point. But the yield point, if we zoom in, has three distinct areas. The first area is known as the limit of proportionality or the proportional limit. The second point of note is the uh, limit of elasticity or the elastic limit. Now the elastic limit is where the curve transitions from the elastic region to the plastic region and therefore we know this as the yield point. This is pretty much the same thing. But to explain this further, as you stress a material before the limit of proportionality, the material still follows Hooke's law of proportionality. However, once it transitions past the proportional limit, it no longer follows Hooke's law of proportionality. However, if you are within this middle portion here, if you remove the stress, the material can still return back to its original length. Hence, it's still elastic. Beyond this portion, which is the elastic limit, it then enters the plastic region of the curve. And therefore, any point beyond this, when the stress is removed, you get permanent deformation. And that's why we also know this as the yield point. Beyond the plastic region, the material undergoes something called strain hardening. This is an area of the curve where you have to have a significant increase in stress to increase the strain. Then the highest point of the curve is known as the ultimate tensile strength and then the material undergoes a phenomenon called necking, which is the gradual decrease in cross-sectional area until the material eventually fails or fractures. Now the area under the curve is known as the toughness of the material. And the toughness is the amount of energy the material can absorb before it fails. Now this is a diagram of a material uh, or uh, a stress strain curve of a material under a tensile load. Now the examiner might ask you to draw the stress strain curve of a material under a compressive load. 
And to do this, it's fairly simple. You just turn your diagram through 180 degrees. You draw your same axes as a continuation. However, this time, on the y-axis, you have compressive stress. And on the x-axis, you have compressive strain. And you just draw the same stress-strain curve with the same principles. You have a linear region, it then undergoes a yield point. You have a plastic region, strain hardening, ultimate tensile stress, strength, and then it undergoes necking and then failure down there.